Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith. I'm here with Todd Wagner. How you doing, Todd? I'm good, man. How you doing? Hello, friends. Well, doing pretty good. And I was thinking about the question that we're talking about today and just thinking about, it's really even kind of sad that we're having to discuss this, but we're, we're filming this right after the largest mass shooting yeah. on American soil. Um, and the question comes up about mass shootings. Why doesn't God stop all these mass shootings and, and terrorism and all this? Why, he, he could. Why doesn't he? Well, he could. All right. And this is a common question that people ask. We're really dealing with a larger problem of evil, okay, which is always uh, formed kind of this way. Okay, if God was good, he would stop evil. If God was God, he could stop evil. God hasn't stopped mass shootings and terrorism. Therefore, he's either not God as, as we understand him, or he's not good as we understand him. Uh, I, I would tell you that there's a, a problem with the premise Okay, and we, we answered an entire real truth real quick on the problem of evil, but we're going to do it specifically to mass shooting, and I'm going to make a case, um, you know, specifically I think that will encourage people maybe open their eyes uh, a little bit to who God is and what he's up to. But just because God hasn't stopped evil completely doesn't mean he won't. The entire story of the scriptures are making the case that God is going to do something about evil. And the reason God hasn't done something about evil yet is because evil is not only defined by mass shootings and terrorism. That might be the way you and I define it, but it's not the way that God defines it. Okay? So typically we define evil as anything that bothers me or that doesn't give me pleasure. And so, um, you know, I, my, my, uh, I've, I've heard uh, someone else say this before, and I thought it was a brilliant observation. Let me ask you a question. How many people do you think were uh, consuming pornography, making pornography, committing acts of adultery on Saturday night when that guy was in Pulse committing murder? A, a lot. A lot. It was all over Orlando, all over Dallas, all over the world. Evil was happening. How many guys were being unfaithful to their wife, abandoning their children? Okay. Uh, how many people were doing other unconscionable acts at that particular moment? We wonder why God didn't stop this thing at the Pulse nightclub, maybe. But uh, a better question is why don't we have any sense of pulse of what righteousness really is? Okay. In other words, um, for God to stop evil, he's not going to just stop Omar Mateen when he pulls into a, a nightclub and takes the lives of people. God would have to stop all evil, okay? And so um, evil is anything that is not the righteousness of God. And if God was going to get rid of evil, he's got to start with me, okay? Now, I may not be walking into a nightclub and, and, and taking multiple lives, but I'm doing things all the time that, that damage God's goodness and purpose in this world, okay? And it's an act of terror to rebel against a righteous and good God. It's an act of rebellion, all right? One of the things that's also true is that we stop right now and we go, man, look at all the evil that is out there. And I would just say, well, why do you call that evil? What's the basis of the fact that there is evil? It's a deep sense that there is an objective, righteous standard somewhere, Okay, so where is that objective righteous standard? We go, well, I don't know where it is, but it's certainly, okay, better than killing a bunch of people in a nightclub. And I go, well, that's the problem. The problem is not does evil exist. The problem is we don't even know what evil exists. We can't be a culture that thrives and, and celebrates the denial of the existence of God and then just whistle up this phrase evil whenever we want to because it's convenient to us, okay? Um, C.S. Lewis, I'm going to read a quote, okay, that uh, he said a long time ago, I know it starts this way. It starts with, we can't remove the organ, okay, and then uh, just demand that the function is still there. We make men without chess and expect of them virtue and enterprise. We laugh at honor and are shocked to find traitors in our midst. We castrate, okay, and then build the geldings to be fruitful. For a long time in our country, okay, Rick, we have been uh, mocking the righteous standard of God. It says in Proverbs 29, where there is no vision for righteousness, okay, for, for how to deal with pain, how to live a moral life, the people are unrestrained. But it says, happy is he who keeps the law. We, we were a country for a long time. There's a reason that mass shootings and terror is escalating in the world, because we are moving increasingly away from what used to be a more commonly held sense of, um, of, of the Judeo-Christian ethic. You know, when I was a kid, Rick, I could bring a, a shotgun that I'd use that weekend hunting with my dad, okay, if I was doing that, and be in my car and I wouldn't be in trouble. We don't let kids leave their shotguns in Texas in their car anymore. It's against the law because, not because 
um, shotguns are any more dangerous today than they were 30 years ago, but because people are more unrestrained today. Okay, we have moved away. We've removed God from schools and classrooms and prayer and the abject standard of righteousness. We want to be a country devoid of God, and then we wonder why evil keeps happening. We remove the organ and demand the function. Okay, uh, we have men without chests and uh, expect of them virtue and enterprise. And so, all I want to say is that God does restrain evil. All right. So, so my my question is, why wasn't there on this particular night uh, forty mass shootings? There is evil. It's alive and it's present in this world, okay? Uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 talks about the fact that there is a restrainer in this world. And you want to see real evil? Wait till that restrainer is removed. There's going to be a day when a third of the earth dies, according to Revelation chapter 9, okay? God's going to slowly let you see how bad things can get apart from him. And we are experiencing in our world right now, when you embrace a false view of God or uh, deny the existence of God, it doesn't go well with you. So, man. Um, so, what do we what do we do? I mean, yeah. Well, we we what we got to do is we got to re- we got to repent. We got to say, man, something's terribly wrong. Okay. Um, I don't believe guns kill people. I believe people kill people. And so, um, if you get rid of guns, there's going to be something else. There were there wasn't a gun problem in Rwanda in the 1990s, and a million people were killed because they used machetes. Okay. And so what you're going to have to do in our country, you know, uh, man, if you just go back and look, and even the way our country was formed, we said our Constitution is not fit to govern a group of people who have no virtue. And so what you're going to see is when people don't have virtue, you've got to put more and more laws on them. You've got to take away more and more freedoms. You've got to take away more and more guns and machetes and everything because evil people use things that aren't in of themselves evil, that they're amoral to do evil things. And what you're seeing is there's a lot of people that are being influenced by something other than a Judeo-Christian ethic or primarily a good view of God that are having opportunity to do great evil. But that potential is always in men. And the reason that evil continues on this earth is because God has not eradicated evil. And if he did, there wouldn't be a single one of us left apart from our being protected and covered by God and his, his loving presence in our life. So... Um, what do we do? We uh, preach the gospel. We comfort those uh, who have suffered. Uh, we don't make the mistake of saying that the reason those guys were killed in the nightclub is because their evil was especially offensive to God. That question was asked in Luke chapter 13. We'll link to a whole message I gave on that. Uh, when towers fall on people, Jesus says this to them. He said, do you think that those guys that the tower fell on were more evil than all of you? You should repent also, okay, unless a similar judgment comes upon you, which means... Okay, one day you're going to face a righteous judge and you don't know when you're going to stand before him and you're going to have to give an account for your life. And if you are not prepared, it's not going to go well with you. So you repent and you be ready. But don't make the mistake of thinking that everybody that tear and evil befalls is more evil than you. Okay, so uh, we, uh, we, we do good is what we do. And we preach the gospel and we comfort those uh, just like God does. It says God is near the brokenhearted and the afflicted. And we ought to be there with them, mourning, weeping, and offering them the hope that comes only through Jesus Christ. All right. Thanks, Todd. Well, listen, if you're watching this and, and we can pray for you or connect with you in any way, there's an email address right down here below me. Feel free to email with those. We read every one of those. Don't, and uh, we'd love to connect with you. Um, also, you can uh, click the subscribe button if you're watching this on YouTube and click that button and then get our uh, weekly videos in your uh, inbox. And we'll see you next week on another episode of Real Truth Real Quick.